Let's consider some examples of computing the total charge of charge distributions using curved coordinates. So let's look at a circular ring of charge, radius A and a charge density lambda, flying in the xy plane. What is the total charge? So let's take a little bit of length of this ring of charge, and that little bit of length, dl, well that little bit of length is actually a little bit of length in the phi direction, it's moving in the phi-ish direction, and so that length is a d phi. So then a little bit of charge dq is lambda times that little bit of length. So we have lambda a d phi for a little bit of charge dq. The total charge is certainly the integral over dq. And so that's an integral of lambda a d phi from 0 to 2 pi. And that integral is nice and easy to do. It's just 2 pi a times lambda. A useful to do, thing to do with units or problems like this is to check units. So the units of lambda, if you recall, are charge per length. And so the units of our result, 2 pi a times lambda, well, 2 pi is just a number. So a has units of length, lambda has units of charge per length, the units of length cancel, and so we just have units of charge, which is, of course, what we want for total charge. Let's consider another example, a solid cylindrical tube with a radius b and a height l and some uniform charge density rho. So we want to take a small cube the volume of this small cube we denote by d tau, and that cube has length in the s direction, the phi direction, and in the z direction. So we write dls, dl phi, dlz, and we write those out in terms of the coordinates ds, sd phi, and dz. So a little bit of charge of this tiny cube is rho d tau, uh, where d tau is that thing up there. The total charge is, of course, the integral over dq. Since this is a volume, that means we're going to have three integrals. We have three coordinates to integrate over. So we have rho, s ds, d phi, dz, where s goes from 0 to b, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, and z goes from negative l over 2 to l over 2. OK, so these are three separate integrals. We can pull rho out of all of them. We have negative l over 2 to l over 2, the integral of dz. We have the integral over d phi from 0 to 2 pi, and the integral over s from 0 to b. All of these integrals are easy to do. We just multiply their results. And so we get rho times l, 2 pi, and then a factor of 1 half b squared. Or the final result, <clears throat> we get rho times pi l b squared. Let's again check the units or the dimensions of this quantity. So the dimensions of this final quantity, pi, rho, l, b squared, well, rho has units of charge per volume, which is charge per length cubed. Then we have a length, and then a length squared. All of the lengths cancel, so we're just left over with units of charge, as we should expect. Let's consider an example that has a non-uniform charge density. So we have a sheet of charge in the xy plane, um, it's square with the size of length L, and a surface charge density, sigma, which depends on y, beta y. So we want to construct a small amount of area on this sheet. The area is in the x and the y direction, so its area is just dx dy. So the amount of charge dq is just sigma times dA, or rather that's beta times y times dx times dy. The total charge is, as always, the integral over dq, since this is a sheet that's going to be a double integral, so we have beta times y dx dy, where x and y run from 0 to l each. So this is two separate integrals. We have an integral from 0 to l of y dy, and then we have an integral from 0 to l of just dx. Again, easy integrals to do. We just have beta times 1 half l squared times another factor of l, or altogether beta over 2 l cubed. Now, it'd be nice to check the units, but we don't really know the units of beta. We weren't really told the units of beta. It's just some quantity, just some constant. So maybe let's first think about what the units of beta are from what we were told at the beginning. We were told the surface charge density sigma is equal to beta times y. We could use this to determine the units of beta. So sigma has units of charge per area, or charge per length squared. Beta, we don't know what their units are and y has units of length. So this tells us that beta must have dimensions of charge per length cubed. 
OK, good. So now we can use this to check our result. Does our result have the units of charge as it should? Well, we have beta L cubed over 2. So beta has units of charge per length cubed. L cubed obviously has length, uh, length cubed. And so we're just left over with units of charge, as we expect, which is good.